45.2. Now, is it okay if I, sometimes we have off-camera sessions because you need to do more painting than can be done on camera. Okay. Is it okay if we're going to have one of these next week? Go over your head. Can I bring my little dog so the dog doesn't have to sit at home? I'd love you to bring your little dog. Okay, we'll bring a little dog. Is it house trained? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Now, you wanted to talk about Syria. Yeah. Um, Lindsey Graham uh, wrote an article for the Wall Street Journal that has the conservative world a buzzing. And what he's saying is, it's a brief article that... Um, yeah, you had me read it. Yeah, it's just a page. And he's basically saying that the uh, Obama administration uh, weirdly overthrew Gaddafi, but then they didn't overthrow Assad when Assad was being attacked by pro-democracy uh, Syrians. And because he did nothing. Well, let me ask one question before you go on. Um, were they gun shy about overthrowing another dude after Syria went so bad? Um, no, no. I mean, they, he never he never claimed to have any kind of uh, regrets about that until after he left office. He said he maybe he shouldn't have gone and <laughs> overthrown Gaddafi. He said that might not have been a good idea, but at the time, he was very confident about his actions towards Gaddafi. They called it leading from behind. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, is that the, there was an incipient democratic movement that had risen up to attempt to overthrow Assad, and the Obama administration sat back and did nothing. And while they did nothing, um, thousands and thousands of Syrians were killed, particularly Syrians that might have been on our side and might have turned Syria into the kind of ally that we have in Arab Jordan. But Obama, as was his wont, did nothing. And as a result, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have been killed. And while he was doing nothing, Putin watched. He actually, Putin did not act. Putin did nothing too, because he, Putin he, was... He loved it. No, because Putin was watching to see what we were going to do. We had just trounced Iraq, Excuse me. and Putin was actually kind of respectful of America at that point. But the Russians waited around and saw that Obama was weak, and so the Russians and the Iranians invaded Syria. And now Syria, not only have hundreds of thousands of people been killed, but Syria is now a vassal oh, state of the uh, Iranians and the Russians. Now you may say, well, you don't give a shit. If you're a Democrat watching this, you don't care if Syria is a vast state of the Russians and the Iranians. But what it does is it makes Iran more powerful and it allows them to dominate more of the Middle East, to threaten Israel and Jordan, and dominate Lebanon. It also gave Syria uh, 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 over to incredibly dangerous elements in the Palestinians called Hezbollah, who are now planning a war against Israel by using incredibly sophisticated rockets and missiles and camp, military camps next to the Israeli border that they plan to rain down death let's, upon the Jews from. Let's just clarify some stuff. Iran has a bunch of money that they use to finance a bunch of terrorist crap across they the They got Mideast. $150 billion from the United States, from Obama. Well, That's where they got the in money. In defense of that, it was their money that we held on to. While You're still doing that. Yeah, but let's not argue no, 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 about no, no, that. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. You still, you still like the fact that we gave them back their money. Well, I mean, just saying, yeah, they... That's a defense for you. Well, I, I mean, you thought it was a good idea to give Iran $150 billion. Maybe not, because what they're spending it on is 
uh, disrupting the rest of the Mideast. So and, and why don't you just guys? say Obama was wrong and the Republicans were right? You sh they shouldn't have done that. Obama did something stupid and traitorous. Why don't you just admit that your man Obama left Syria a hellhole and he armed the Iranians with enough money to conquer half the Middle East? I'm just hold on. I'm, I'm semi agreeing with you on stuff. Ooh, so all just, right. just you know, like we had 150 billion dollars of their money, which we should have kept. I don't know how we could have gotten this. Now, you hate the the nuclear agreement. You think it's bullshit, right? But given that if you don't, if you think there's a chance it's not bullshit, I don't see how you get that agreement done without giving back their money. <laughs> Though I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's like it's like there's the logic. Look, in order to get an agreement that gives Iran a nuclear bomb in five years, we have to give them $150 billion. Yeah, yeah, but that's, that's... It's brilliant. And stop stepping on the last sentence of every paragraph I make. Okay. But, I mean, the deal, like, you have, you think the, the agreement's terrible. But if you, if you like me, if, if you think that there's maybe a chance it wasn't terrible, um, but what, what is the logic behind that? You're a man of science. Why do you think it wasn't terrible? What makes you think it wasn't terrible? To the, the chance that they really aren't working as hard on building nukes but, as but they But we were. know they are. We, we, there's evidence. They're, they're testing out the ICBMs right, right as we speak. All right, so well, it turned out to be a bad idea. And we knew it was going to be a bad idea. Well, you got two different elements. You got the ICBMs... Or did we, does that agreement encompass ICBMs? No, but that's half the that's half the argument. Well, then the um, you the should agreement be... should have encompassed ICBMs. So it was a bad but agreement. Let's, let's, hold on, let's define what ICBMs. Uh, ICBM is an intercontinental ballistic missile. It's a big ass rocket that can fly a bomb across thousands of miles. It's not a nuke. The, the nuke is the bomb. The right. ICBM is the delivery system if you want to fly yeah. a bomb right. someplace. Do you, uh, do you think you would use an ICBM for dynamite? Would you, would you, would you use a giant I, no, wait, rocket? I'd use it for candy. It would be like a pinata. Okay. okay. For those paying attention, you don't use an ICBM for a conventional weapon. You, the only purpose for an ICBM is for a nuclear warhead. What is the, if you may, if I may interrupt, what is the consensus amongst the countries neighboring Iran in terms of the deal? What does Israel say about the deal? What does Saudi Arabia say about the deal? Egypt? They, they, Israel, the president, the prime minister of Israel came to the U.S. Congress and begged us not to make that deal. Well, he's super hawkish. What are some other leaders? Super hawkish? He is. Uh, okay, so, so, so. The president of Israel, the prime minister of Israel, comes to the U.S. and for the first time in American history, okay, an Israeli sorry. prime okay, minister begs us not to make a deal. And Rick's got another view. He's a he's a bad guy. Netanyahu no, can't say be that. trusted. He's hawkish. Well, no, I'm just ah. saying he's super. What you he, want to know how Israel feels? Yeah. Israel thinks they got screwed. Okay, I mean, did they do opinion? They, somebody must yes, have taken this survey. Yes. So, what percent of Israelis say Most, that it's a the crap vast deal? majority. Okay. All, right. all except for the kooks. Okay. And what does Egypt think? Not that Egypt. Does. Egypt and Saudi Arabia and Israel formed a secret alliance. The Israelis are testing their aircraft over Saudi Arabian airspace because the Saudi Arabians are planning to let the Israeli Air Force cross their space to get to the, to the Iranian nukes. That's how bad a deal it was. It was such a bad deal that Saudi Arabia, that the country that how hates Israel- How bad a deal was it? Don't interrupt me no, every time I try to make supposed, a point. No, I, I, it was such a bad, I'm gonna say it very slowly now so you can't that's fuck up my point. Setup. It was such a bad deal that the country that hates Israel the most in the world, Saudi Arabia, made a deal with Israel so that Israel could prepare their attack on the, on the Iranian nuclear facilities over is Saudi Arabian territory. And if you look at a map, the Israeli planes have to fly directly over Saudi Arabia to get to Iran. It was such a bad deal that Obama united Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Israel against the deal, against Iran. Well, so it's a good deal because it made all these countries that hate each other get together. 
Okay. All right. So, all right. So, let's grant your point that there was a a good time to try and help democracy under Syria. What do you do now that those potentially democratic forces got aligned with a bunch of bad dude? What do you? How do you get out of it now? Well, what you how do you to, how do you and Lindsey Graham get out of it? Well, what you have to do is you have to go to the enemy forces in the area and you have to say, look, we're going to carve out a piece of Syria that is a no-fly zone. And this will be a safe zone for people that want to come back to their homeland from Europe or wherever they've escaped to, from Jordan Jordanian and Turkish refugee camps. And this area will be, will be protected by U.S. And, and allied air forces. And in that area, <clears throat> we train people that want to fight Assad and will we'll present to us evidence that they're not going to turn into complete assholes if we help them. All right, so and, and what that means is, right now, Assad has one good quality, and that is he doesn't kill Christians, he doesn't kill anti, uh, he doesn't kill people that aren't Muslims. So the problem is you got to find Syrians that are willing to get rid of Assad, but aren't going to end up murdering everyone after they do that. And right, you know, so that's part of the problem, is that when there was an incipient democratic movement that was not ISIS, that's when, when Obama should have acted. All right, so we now, missed a good opportunity, but is this going to happen now? Is, is Trump going to listen to Lindsey Graham, for instance, and do this? I read an article that, yeah, that, that agrees with a lot of this, that there are still a bunch of people in, in the embattled sections of Syria that have, have managed to, with our help to squelch ISIS. They, they still believe in America. So are we going to... Make okay, it well, here, here's the problem. Trump, if you want to know what I think Trump's going to do, the one thing we know about Trump is that he's not willing, he's not shy. Once he commits to using force, he'll use it effectively because he crushed ISIS. He, he took the gloves off. He's crushing his opponents in Afghanistan, and he's crushing ISIS. So if Trump acts... What's, wait, how's he crushing people in Afghanistan? Well, right, More than right, right now, we're, we're, we're fighting with new rules of engagement in Afghanistan, and we're fighting to win. We're, not, we're pushing the Taliban back. They were trying to creep back into being a factor in Afghanistan, and the U.S. Army is, is, is crushing them back again. Yeah, I mean, so, they're... They, They'll always try to do that. I don't know that you well, can get they, rid of them well, entirely. They will if you let them come back, yeah, which is what Obama had done. So I mean, we might be there for a while longer. Okay. Yeah. My, my point is this. It, for Trump to... Trump was willing to commit just a few miles away in Iraq to crushing ISIS. So he might be persuaded to, to commit to carving off a piece of Syria and making that a free Syria territory. But I don't know if he will. Because there's one, now that Obama did his work, there is a powerful Russian presence in Syria. And there's a fear that Russians and Americans will collide. And so that, that's the only thing that would stop Trump now. All right, so I don't know that we have that much to argue about here, because. I don't know that much about it. I can tell you this much. Before we fight in Syria to defeat Iran, because Iran now controls Damascus, the capital of Syria, it, 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 and they control, and they've wormed their way into Lebanon. So Iran has gone from the middle of, of Central Asia, or the, they've gone from, from the east all the, way to the, all the way to the Mediterranean. They have a swath of power. That's what Obama left uh, for Iran. 
not only did he give them this agreement, but he left them wide open so they could move from, uh, from Asia all the way to the Mediterranean through Damascus, Iraq, and Syria. And so if are there, what, is there what anybody, I, what I let predict... Me ask, let me ask, hold on, one question. Is there anybody who thinks that this isn't the case? It seems like this, there's agreement on this. Well, that, there, there's, that Iran mean, has its paws in everything that's bad across the... Yeah, I mean, he, I guess if you find the most left-wing site on Earth, they may say, Obama was a great victor. He held a, Iran in check. Yeah, you know, and he'll come that. down and say, see, I read this article. And, and Iran has, ha, was left powerless and prostrate before right. Obama's but, but, genius. But everybody but, but, pretty but, much agrees well, there's that Iran... Iranian, there is All an right. Iranian military force in Syria right, All right now. Okay. All Guys right. with weapons are right there right now. And Lebanon is completely controlled by the Palestinians who are proxies of, of Iran. So I don't see that we have So those two countries have been... Us have to been, yell at, at each other. Not about. each other, but, but, what I'm, but you asked me a question and I never got to answer it. In my personal opinion, we will bomb the Iranian nuclear facilities before we take them on in, in Syria. And if we do that, it will lead to the downfall of the Iranian government. They're, they will fall, in my opinion, in Iran before they fall in Syria. That's what I'm guessing. And because we can let them dick around in Syria forever, but we're not going to allow them to develop a nuclear bomb. Will this happen? Will the bombing happen? The best time for the Republicans to, well, and Trump to do this would be before an election, because that always tends to make people turn out for the side in power. I think that what's going to happen is it'll be the, Syri the, I think the Israelis will be secretly given all the equipment they need to bomb Iran, and on the surface, it will seem like it was the Israelis that did it, but it will be with our, with our, uh, with our, a lot of our aid. In 2018, so it'll or? be it'll be it'll be a joint military operation between the two of us, but the Israelis will get the blame. They'll get okay. the credit and the blame. Will this happen this year? Um, it depends. I don't know the answer to that because I don't know how far along the Iranians have gotten. Uh, but, but what is going to happen this year is there are dangerous, very advanced uh, Iranian weapons in the hands of Hezbollah, the terrorists that have found their way into southern Lebanon and are going to be shot at Israel. So very soon the Israelis are going to have to attack those weapons. And when they do, it might they'll probably kill Iranians in the process who have found their way into Lebanon and Syria. So there will, if, you, if you're looking for a, a, uh, uh, a spark, the spark will be when the Israelis have to knock out the uh, Hezbollah missiles. Okay. All right, let's move on to something else. Uh, really quick, there's two blurry, there's a breaking news that there was another bomb in Austin that went off the third explosion, and, and do you want to comment on that? Then? I, I don't know anything about it. it. It's, I mean, is it South by Southwest right now? I, it, it's just, I don't think it's like in any major, like two people were killed today. That's, I mean, we're, that's, I mean, that's. But they're people, not tying it to terrorism or anything like that. No. What do they think it is? Don't move your head. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Neither do I. All so right. let's move on. Uh, also another blaring, glaring headline, both on CNN and Drudge, is that if Trump fires Mueller, then that's the end of his presidency. Do you think he has the constitutional power to fire Mueller? What do you, what do you think? You think he should fire him or not, or let the investigation proceed? What What do you think, Rick? Well, Nixon didn't have to leave office. The power the the most powerful Republicans, and you probably know the details better than I do. But powerful Republicans in Congress went to Nixon and said, your support has gone to nothing, basically. And you know, you're going to be impeached. And, and impeachment is two parts. Impeachment is the beginning of a trial. And then the second part is what they vote on 
whether you get kicked out of office or not. And it's bad, they told Nixon, hold still for me and talk, but hold still. Okay, it's better for you to leave now. And Nixon, who was an experienced politician, was like, yeah, unfortunately, you're right. I'm going to leave. So Trump is not an experienced politician. Um, and the Republicans have been more willing to be less outraged at some of this stuff than the Republicans of the Nixon era. Um, what was the question? If uh, Trump has the... Is, is this the end of his presidency? No, if, if, it, he, if he fires if him. If he fires him. Yeah. And I don't know, because there are a lot of... Well, all the Democrats will say, will say yeah, he can't... If he does that, it's the end. But if the Republicans control the House and the Senate, so it's pretty much up to them right now. Um, and a lot of Republicans are saying, yeah, you shouldn't fire Mueller. And very, I, I don't know what the, the percentage of saying, yeah, go ahead and fire him, and what the percentage of, among the Republicans are saying, let the investigation proceed. So I don't know whether it would be the end of his presidency. Well, okay. Uh, he, in order for Trump to leave office, uh, Rick said, said what Rick said was correct. He's got to, um, he's got to be uh, removed by the Senate. So even if the Republicans lose the House, I believe he's got to be, there's got to be a two-thirds vote in the Senate to remove Trump, and they're not going to get that. There, there are not two-thirds uh, of votes to remove Trump. But, uh, I was listening to uh, Trey Gowdy, who I have, I have mixed feelings about Trey Gowdy, uh, but what he was saying today was, recently, was that the purpose of the uh, Mueller investigation is to find out how Russia interfered in the election. And as a result, they've been able to find some, some hackers, some, some people that Facebook, um, a variety of, of sort of Russian shenanigans. But they haven't, in my opinion, found anything on Trump. Or if they have, they're not telling Rick about it. So my point is, is that Mueller should be, it, it's not necessary for Trump to fire Mueller. What if Mueller was an honorable man, he would just say, look, I need to find out every little thing that the Russians did during this election. If there's any shenanigans they were up to, I need to reveal it. But as of now, and for the, uh, I don't have anything on Trump. So that would take the political aspect out, out of the investigation. That would be the honorable way to go because Everybody wants to know what the Russians may have done. If the Russians did dirty tricks, if they, if they, you know, caused uh, uh, all kinds of uh, crimes in our election, we we need to stop that. But it behooves Mueller to admit he doesn't have any evidence. Well, I think everything we've heard about Mueller says he's an honorable guy. No, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that one bit. If he was an honorable guy, he wouldn't have hired 10 Democrats to prosecute this. He would have had five Republicans and five Democrats. How many people work for him? It's more well, than he's 10. Got, he's got 10. His 10 major people are all Democrat donors that, that actually donated to the Clinton campaign. It wasn't a lot of money. They weren't big donors, but they were, they were card-carrying Clinton supporters. He's got more than 10 people working. I understand, but the, te the top people in his office working on this are all absolutely biased Clinton supporters. And that stinks to well, me. He's that a Republican. He well, himself that, but is that's a irrelevant. Republican. That's completely so irrelevant. So on the one hand, there, that there, doesn't there, matter. No, on the other hand, they. No, well, look, there are Republicans that voted for Clinton. Uh, Meg, uh, Meg Whitmore who ran for governor in California, voted for Whitman. Clinton. Whitman. Yeah, she voted for Clinton. 
It doesn't matter that he's a Republican. That's just a title. He hired 10 people that not only vo voted Democrat, they, they actively supported and donated to Hillary. And those are the 10 top people. Maybe they were the most qualified people. And you couldn't find a single Republican? A single Trump supporter Maybe could not. Maybe he didn't look at that. I don't know. Well, well, don't you think? I it's know that he has at least in a in a city where half the people, half the lawyers are Democrat and half the lawyers are Republican. You couldn't find one Trump supporter to put on your staff. He he has at least thirteen. And I thought it was more like nineteen investigators. Okay, there are no Trump supporters in those in the high positions in his thing. There's nothing to argue about, Rick. Just accept it. I'm not making it up, and it's not fair. It stinks. It, you wouldn't do that if you were trying to be fair. You'd spice it up. You'd have some Republicans, some Trump supporters, and some Clinton supporters. But he didn't. He's out to get Trump. And if he wasn't, he would just announce, look, as of this moment, we don't have anything. We're, we want to know if the Russians did something, but we don't have anything on Trump. And everyone could relax. Wait and see. Either he has stuff on Trump or he doesn't. Well, if he does, he's keeping it very secret. Yeah, but he's kept everything very secret. It's no, he like... hasn't. He just indicted 23 Russians. You just announced it 10 minutes yeah. ago. But, I mean, he's... Why, he... Is, he, why is he indicting these low-level uh, soldiers that, that, that are at the lowest level of the Russian uh, operation, and he's leaving Trump alone? Why? Why doesn't he indict Trump? Because you build a pyramid. Now, maybe he doesn't reach the top of the pyramid. Maybe the, 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 the shenanigans stop short of Trump. Then he should just say that. But he can't determine it yet, or maybe he can. And After he's 14 to... months and millions and millions of dollars oh. and 23 investigators? We've talked about this. Of, oh, 23 investigators? You just told me it was 23. No, no indictments, not investigators. You said, okay, I said the top 10 people were Democrats. Then you said you thought he had 13 or 20? I just thought he had 13 or 19. I didn't say 20. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Um, anyway, let's move on to, uh, high, I went to a high school basketball game last night. My wife works at a high school, and her uh, school was, had a basketball, a, an important basketball game. And I was sitting next to the kids section. <laughs> And I have a theory that back when you and I went to high school, we were your class of 79, right? I was class of 78. I was also class of 80. I think I was 78 as well. Okay. And I was also class of 87 because I kept going back to high school because I thought high school was interesting and or you know, just a decent place to hang out. Okay. Not a place once I hit my 20s to creep on girls, but just a place to... to to be and think about stuff. Um, but anyway, I think that when I initially went to high school, when I was initially a junior and a senior in the late 70s, um, I was kind of a ball of ignorance and anxiety. Like, how could I, I wanted to be popular, I wasn't. I wanted a girlfriend, I couldn't get one. Um, I worried that I never could get one. And there were a bunch of movies in the late 70s and into the 80s. A lot of the John Hughes movies um, are about high school social anxiety. 16 Candles with Molly Ringwald. Um, is, she's anxious the whole movie. She doesn't think she'll get a, a boyfriend. She's all upset because it's her 16th birthday and nobody's noticed and... She suffers a variety of social humiliations, and you know, she, uh, everybody in, in the breakfast club is angsting for his or her own reasons. Um, and then you get to Ferris Bueller, who is, that's a portrait of, of an idealized guy who has no anxiety. <laughs> it, it's, it's like a, he's, he's like this icon of chill though his best friend is completely unchill and is full of anxiety about everything. But my theory is, and I bought into that whole anxiety that was being sold, um, what was the name of that movie about, the, oh, The Last American, there was Last American Virgin, there was 
losing it. Um, there are all these movies about the, the, the major plot axis was would the, the main character who was socially inept ever you know, find love or sex? And I bought into that entirely. Animal House? And there's a little bit of that in Animal House where the lead character you know, is socially inept and by joining an animal fraternity, he, he gets laid. Um, inappropriately, it turned, in a, in a way that could not happen in a movie today. But uh, I would say that today's students are more chill because they have all their friends with them all the time via their phones. The kids next to me were on the phones all the time, not talking, you know, texting and posting. And, and so they're full of information. Like, you know, all the questions I had, where I had one best friend that I would talk about, you know, how to get a girlfriend, will we ever get a girlfriend, how do you get, blah, blah, blah. Um, Joe Stevens and I would walk for, we, we each had a semi-embarrassing dog. I had Mitzi the Poodle, Joe had Sam the Beagle, and we would just, we lived four blocks from each other, and we'd just walk our dogs together all the time and hash over how we were ever, ever gonna, like, be socially successful in high school. We had no clue as to how to go about any of this, and it, it was an overwhelming concern. I think today's kids have more information via the internet. We were, as I said, kind of balls of ignorance. And they have the comfort of having peer groups available to them whenever they're awake via their phone. Discussion? Um, I don't know much about it. I, uh, I've, I feel very sorry for kids these days because, um, the, I mean, I've talked about this before, that the two things that I think are saddest about kids these days is, well, there are several things that I find very peculiar about them. Of course, everybody criticizes the youth, but I... I'm sorry that they grew up watching so much pornography on the internet because I think it, it can't be healthy. I, um, I, I wonder how it works. Wait, can I, can I finish that? No, can I, no, let me give you this comment and then go on. Where, when you and I were growing up, I kind of climbed the ladder of porn. The first salacious material I saw, um, besides like sexy ads in GQ magazine, um, which might have a topless lady. Occasion, I saw naked lady playing cards. Uh -huh. And then I saw Playboys, and which had, you know, didn't introduce, didn't show the pubic area until like 1972. And then only after that did I see Penthouse, and only years after that did I see actual porn, you know, pictures of people having sex. Yes. And Maybe I was eased is. into it. Um, I mean, I was enough, I was innocent enough when I learned the facts of life from a kid whose dad was a doctor in fourth grade. I went home and I yelled at my parents for the filthy thing they did to make me. I was appalled. I'm glad you put your foot down on that. <laughs> That's good. So, that so, but stuck up for I yourself. was gradually eased into. You should have told your mother to, you should, that she should never have allowed that to happen. I was, she should have stuck up for herself. I was a little bit of a little priss, but, um, but I got eased into porn. And you it, know what? You should have told your mother that next time Dad tries anything, you're going to give him a fat lip. Yeah. Well, no. I was or kick him in the knee so that he goes like this. No, he was my stepdad. He was very manly, and I was, he made, I was afraid of him. I would have never done that. Even to keep your mother from having sexual intercourse? Well, hey, it takes two to tango. It wasn't just, I mean, I don't know. Anyway. Did you ever watch National, did you ever see a National Enquirer magazine or something like that? National. Enquirer? No, National Geographic. With the, with the, the, the African ladies with no bras on? 
Uh, nah, that was kind of... Actually, the, the librarian at my junior high would look through the magazines, like National Geographic, and cut out any things where you might see a nipple. You'd just be turning the pages and there'd be a big square cut out of the page. Um, but anyway, today's kids are, yeah, it, it's, I don't know how that works where, you know, you type in the wrong thing or something, you know, and you, you see BJ's at, and you're 11. Or, Have we or, talked about this before, by the way? Not with this particular, I, I don't know how, I mean, how that doesn't make you a little... I, I think I think the kids today are little perverts. I mean, it, and it, it's not their fault. I mean, and you know, I don't want to get into the thing where where I'm the old guy that criticizes young people, but there are two or three things that bother me that they're living without. The first is they are living in a pornified world where they're seeing pornographic things really their whole life that I, I never even thought of. Um, they, uh, there's a huge amount of atheism. Apparently that's the new trend among young people. And most of them are socialists that are, uh, that's the other new thing. They, they're not as patriotic. And so in general, the, the well, you know. You can still be patriotic and be, have, you know, be in favor of like a progressive taxation system, which you no, might no. Call. Most most young people these days are are actually socialist. Like that's a new trend. It, it's it's skyrocketing. So the liberals have managed to brainwash our kids into being socialist. And I think that atheism, socialism, and sexual perversion are three things that I didn't have to worry about when I was a kid. And I'm sorry that this generation has to. Well, let me. And, and also, let they me, don't. Hold on, can, they I don't can I distinguish? And also, they, they don't they don't know what what sex they are. They're not sure. They could be gay. They could be bi. There are, they have so many choices. They don't even know. And I think that's kind of sad because when I was a kid, you were either a boy or a girl. And, well, and uh, that was fine. And and we liked it that way. It was let good me, enough. Hold on, hold on. I got a bunch of stuff it to say. Let me hold you it. didn't have all the choices you have today. Well, these young whippersnappers, they 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 can choose what. Let me. Self I want to tell. Hold on. Let me tell a story. Let me tell a story. Have, yeah, it, it, whether it's goes all right, in all right, or comes right, out, right. or whether they can put it up, chop it off, and stick it on their ear. When I was a kid, you had what you had, and you had to stick with it. And, and you got by with just whatever it was. Yeah, well, all right. So after I graduated. And no, come on, if me... you went to your dad and said, I'd, I'd rather not have this thing, he hit you with his belt. And then you knew. Yeah, all right. That so, was the end of the decision. So after I graduated high school, I went back to high school because I wanted to get a girlfriend. And I was not going to leave high school until this happened. And so I, was, I went from being a high school senior in Boulder, I graduated, and then I moved in with my dad and my stepmom until they kicked me out. Um. It's 45.2. business. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, so. Anyway. Um. That's a, good, that's a good point. So anyway, I was back in high school in Albuquerque and to see if I could get a girlfriend because I wasn't going to allow myself to go on to college until I... So this kid who sat next to me in chemistry, good-looking kid, well-dressed, had a cool car. I forget how I knew he had a cool car. And there's no place to hang out in Albuquerque. It's... It, the social life there sucks if you're in high school. But there was a, like a group of people who'd hang out in parking lot in a parking lot every weekend with their cool cars. But there were no girls. It was just guys with their cool cars. And I somehow knew this. He was always and talking about it. we liked it that way. No, we didn't because I, it offended me. And it's like, here I am. I've scuttled my chances to go to college. I'm back in high school to get a girlfriend. Here's a guy... Good looking guy, nice clothes, nice car, who spends every weekend just hanging out with other guys who have cars. I'm like, 
why aren't you trying? I turn to him one day in chemistry in my frustration, and I say, why aren't you trying to get a girlfriend? And he says to me, you can't worry about everything. And I'm like, what the fuck? I hated that. But that's not a terrible attitude. I, may I say something? Yes. I, this, is, this is something we haven't discussed in public, and I think we should. If I find out, when I was a kid, there was a female English teacher that was very attractive, and she would have sex with her male students in high school. And I would just like to say, that woman should have been given a medal. And if I, if I had a kid today, and he was having sex with his female teacher when he was 13, I would be, I would be so, I would send her a bouquet. I, and I would not put her in jail. I think that's another sick thing about today. What, whatever happened to, to uh, just, I wouldn't be upset about it. That's all I well, just Well, let, let me say this, which is, the politically correct thing is to deplore sexual predation, whichever gender it involves. No, if it's if it's a male teacher seducing a no, I'm a saying the politically girl, correct thing. That guy should be put in prison. Yeah. But the reverse, a woman seducing her 13-year-old boy, student, no, that's okay. I think there should be two standards. I'm saying what the politically correct thing is now. Yeah. Looking back on... she's doing him a big favor. Now, as a nerdy kid... Yes. ...who read extensively and wasn't sporty, stayed in inside, tried to stay in at recess and read, um, I became horny way too early because I, I read adult books was exp and was exposed to adult material, didn't have baseball to distract me. Um, and so by age nine and a half, I was beating off. Okay, look. No, hold on. No, hold on. And at some point I realized I am 10 years old. I am nerdy. What the hell am I going to do? This is going to be like, what can I do? I'm 10 years old. I'm a dweeb. And then as time went on, I realized I was in the middle of a, a sexual desert of, of no escape until I, I didn't lose my virginity until three months shy of my 20th birthday. All right, so, that's it. You, you, got, you can't let people know that. But I just did. I mean, and, uh, but like, so I, I do share the sentiment like when I hear now, I know it's sexual predation of a, of, some, of a woman who has severe issues that she should become involved with some 14 or 15 year old schmucky boy. The issue is that she's a saint. Well, she, you know what? You, wouldn't you have loved it if you'd been seduced by your nanny or your teacher? Yes. Okay. Well, at age 10, and I'm let's like. Let's just be honest no, about no, this. No, I'm, I'm being honest. At age 10, I'm. Then like, you're not a Democrat. You're not a liberal. You're a Republican, Rick. <laughs> Take the pledge. All right, well, um, yay, somebody having sex with me at age 12, but nay, I'm not, still not voting for Trump. Um, but my first thought is whenever hey, wait I hear... Minute, wait, wait, the guy, the guy has sex with porn stars, and you don't like him? Uh, he, uh, he's your hero. He's, he's, he's what he's you want to be. No. No. He's doing what you've always wanted. The guy hasn't done a sit-up ever. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have to. He still gets the porn stars that you only look at. Are, I've, no, I've, I've met my share of porn stars. Okay, well, have you trumped them? I've been married happily for I'm nearly... just saying you should have a little admiration. You should feel a little empathy for the guy. A, no. little, a little bit of... You, he's, he's one of us. He shouldn't be. Abe Lincoln didn't bang porn stars. Um, Eisenhower, he had Mamie. Okay, and my, actually, he had some here, here's too. my Here's my question. There is not one single perversion that you liberals aren't in favor of. Nothing. There's nothing that doesn't go with you guys that you don't love. 
that you don't insist is beautiful. But when, wait, Trump, wait, wait, has, let's but when Trump has sex with a porn star, you're all like, oh, oh, shocked. I'm shocked. You're in favor of orgies. You're in favor of gay marriage. You're in favor of polygamous marriage. You're in favor of every possible sexual combination except for Trump having an affair with a porn star. You're not a liberal, you're a hypocrite. And so are all of you. Mm. All of you are hypocrites. We just don't want a scummy guy as our president. So you're willing to say, okay, we were fine with every other sexual no, behavior no, no, no. of every other president, but we're gonna use this to needle Trump. Right? <laughs> No, I mean... It's it, dishonest. It's disingenuous. It's just, a, it's just a little trick you're using. No, I mean, because when you look at, F, at <coughs> Kennedy, he was scummy. He, well, he was a mess. I just heard on CNN that they delivered... That, well, he had, what, Graves' disease? No, Addison's disease, right? Or some, He had so much wrong with him um, that you know, they said he had last rites delivered to him twice. He was a... They covered it all up. They covered Don't up move. his Don't move. all right. They covered up his illness. They covered up. He had a banging office, uh, a banging chamber in the White House, a, a former butler's pantry or or little dorm room in the basement where he would take the women he was banging down there and he'd bang them perfunctorily because he didn't care if they had fun. He just wanted to bang and he'd be like. All right, bang, 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 and then he'd be like, all right, clean yourself up. I gotta go back upstairs and be president. That's no way to be. Which president? Kennedy, JFK, had a, a banging room with a little cod in it. Bang, 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 so back what upstairs. You, so, 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 so when Trump has an affair on his wife 10 year, 14 years before he takes office, you're like up in arms, like, oh, I'm, I'm shocked. I, I, oh, this is, this is immoral behavior, according to Democrats. Well, I'm not exactly going yay JFK for banging a bunch of people. Yeah, but you were okay with Clinton banging a bunch of people. Well, in retrospect, maybe less so. You'd still vote for him. Do you, do you think that Trump having an affair with Stormy Daniels makes him uh, impeachable? No. So I what mean, do you hope to get from this, by the way? I'm just curious. Is it just to sully him? I'm hoping it loses just to him some of the... Him, loses him a few votes the, um, from fundamentalists? The, yeah. I mean, okay. there's that. Yeah. So that's it. That's what it's all about. You're not offended at all. In fact, no, no, in, no, fact no, no, no. in fact, it's okay if someone commits adultery, right? You're okay with no. it, right? No. Well, it depends. You're okay. It's no, like, a, right. It's okay. It's not a big deal to you, right? Well, here's... If you found out your co-workers at work were having affairs on their wives, you wouldn't, like, report them or try to break up their marriage or... You wouldn't do anything about it, right? My co-workers aren't You don't president. think it should be illegal, right? No. Do you think that, that President Trump should suffer something because he's had an affair? If he had an affair. We don't know. It depends on how he conducted everything. Did he make a deal with Melania that he's... Well, why is it any of your fucking business? All right, let's... If you look at the history of presidents, like in the past, I don't know, since FDR on, like half of all presidents have had mistresses or have fucked around on their wives. Okay. So Trump is, you know, I mean... In that way, he's no different from half the presidents. And quite a few American citizens. Yeah. So, yeah, what but, do you, but, what do you, but, so don't you feel a little bit vile? Like man. you've got this little thing that you no, can no, needle no. Trump on. Well, yeah, that's fine because Trump, I mean, it's not so just So you that. don't really care about the adultery, do you? It, no, it, it's, look, if you've, there, if you've, as I've, I've said this before, Don't that move. I've had to write, I've written jokes for TV for decades. And in that capacity, I've known about Trump for decades. And this is, in my mind, just one more thing that is an indicator of, of overall sleaziness. I just, I just think the malicious glee of Democrats is hypocritical and, and frankly disgusting. 
It's, it, they're such hypocrites. It's so obvious that they're doing this. They don't give a fuck about, about adultery. It, it, Democrats and adultery, that's a joke to them. They laugh at fundamentalist Christians. They laugh at people that are faithful to their wives. They think that's a joke. What, what this is, is an obvious attempt to smear Trump. And I just think coming from the Democrats that put up with every conceivable perversion on the part of their presidents is, is the height of hypocrisy. Well, let's, let's, no, let's, like, let's look at presidents. JFK. No, we've already had this discussion. All, almost all the presidents had affairs except for probably Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter didn't. Reagan apparently didn't. But he was divorced a few times. Yeah, and God no, once, knows what once. his youth was like. Maybe, I don't know, he seemed, he seemed to have pretty low libido. He, he was, well, he sowed his wild oats when he was a movie He star. says he did, did, but who knows. Do you know what I heard, just, this is off topic. By the way, I derailed you. You were gonna say something about high school about 20 minutes ago, and I'm sorry. We'll I get back you. to it, but, uh, but wait, my, let's finish up that one thing about teachers. I will admit that whenever I read about some kid, some boy kid, some boy, Yes. 14, 15, 16, um, being caught having an affair with, a, you know, a, a 28 or a 30 year old attractive teacher, <laughs> female. It sounds so good. I just, well, I, I can no, my barely first, hate right now. My first thought is, oh, you stupid kid. How did you let this get out? No, my first thought is, yes! No, because the kid always screws it up. The mom always looks... Well, he brags. He brags because he's an idiot. Who wouldn't? Or the mom gets on the phone and there are these... He's got to tell everyone. Or what's the point? If you can't the tell... The point him, is... If you can't tell all your friends that you're doing it, then it's not even worth doing. Well, the point is that the, the kid's a schmuck. But that's why you don't have sex that's with... That's one reason you don't have he's sex a kid. with... He's a kid. He's a kid. With, with kid. a 16-year-old boy. Right. I mean... Anyway, so, oh, th this thing, the, you're talking about atheism yes. being the, the hot new thing. Yes. I, I think that scientism, which is the belief that, you know, you can figure out things scientifically, and to some extent agnosticism. Stop moving your head. Sorry. I don't think those things necessarily equate to atheism. Atheism is, 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 a, is a really crystallized belief that there is no God. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, but when I'm you... saying that when they do surveys of young people today, th this is the highest number of atheists in the history of the United States. Yeah, but and when you get... It looks like this is the trend for the future. Yeah, but when they... When I'm not I, don't, about, I don't know what I'm choices they... I'm not talking they... about science. I they mean... just say, do you believe in God? No. That's it. No, I mean, kids are not very developed. Yeah, but they, they, I, they, they, what I'm saying is, is that if we're raising a generation to believe in Marx, but not believe in God. Well, they don't believe in frickin' Marx. Well, they, they, the, the socialism is the majority for young people these days. Well, or did you know shit when you were 17? I, I was, Did you have I a was, sophisticated I, understanding of no, socialism and capitalism? No, but there were enough young people my age that were capitalists that America was saved for another generation. This generation is ruined. Is what I'm afraid of is calling them back from the brink of socialism to believing in America is going to be extremely difficult because you guys have ruined them. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I'm trying to save America from people with your views. Yeah, when these kids who say, according to you, that they're socialist and that they're atheist, their, their beliefs aren't that developed. And what they mean by, I don't think what they, when they say they don't believe in God, I think what it means is that they don't believe in like the Catholic God or the Jewish God. I mean, as a Jewish person, we don't even know what kind of God we believe. We don't know whether we believe in heaven or not or hell or not. I think a lot of the kids that you think are lost forever say because they are godless, heathen, I, I think 
you know, that there are degrees of belief. And yeah, I do think that there's been an erosion of institutions that helped cement American values in the 20th century. And I think that that makes it tough, tougher to, for people to find values now. Because those values were easily available to kids in the 1950s, at least in our idealized version of it. You know, patriotism, Boy Scouts, your church, uh, well, high school sports, there was a bunch of stuff that has been eroded. And we'll have to see if, as I said, I think, don't move, sorry, I think that kids are more chill. Um, our director says that, because we were discussing this on the drive to you, that, it, that today's kids are not used to delayed gratification. That, you know, when I wanted to become worthy of a girlfriend, I started lifting weights and I, I, I did various things, a lot of which were stupid. Like in junior high, I memorized 105 digits of pi, hoping someone would notice me and that someone would be a girl. Nobody has ever gotten laid from memorizing digits of pi. In fact, it, it actually works against you. Yeah, the more people, digits you know, the less, the more years it's going to be before just you do run. it. Exactly. They, it, it's as if you're radioactive. Yeah, yeah it's um, the worst, worst thing. You but can do. anyway, the, the 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 people used to have to make efforts to 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 try to strive for social success, and now, you know, social success having a, a, a Comforting peer group is as close as your phone. Okay. Should we break now? Um, yeah, and lastly, it was Pi Day, and you talked about the digits. Can you give us a Pi Day uh, greeting and send off? Do you mean like 3.14159265358979223846264338 that's about as far as I can go. I mean, on Pi Day, I knew another 10 digits, but I, I, you know, they come and go. All right, I think that's a good time for a break.